am I the butthole, for upstaging my wife and our Christmas cookie baking tradition? My, 25 male, wife, 23 female, and I have had a tradition every Christmas where we would bake Christmas cookies and frost them without frames. We'd then give the cookies out to frames and family and helpers. Every year, my wife would take on the bulk of the baking duties, insisting that only she knew how to bake them right and only letting whoever is helping frost them. She always insisted on doing all the baking because frosting is the fun part and the only thing people want to do. Usually this frosting and baking marathon would last until the wee hours of the morning, and start around noon. Well, this year, for reasons that aren't relevant to this post today, she would not be available on the day we normally do all of this. She was sad that we wouldn't be able to do our cookie tradition. I said that I was more than capable of baking the cookies. She seemed to think I was joking and that I could basically never do it myself. Well, I said I'd try, and she wished me a sarcastic good luck. Well, in the run-up to the days of baking and frosting, I start running drills to optimize production. Enter testing and tragic mistake montage I started rearranging the house in various configurations, running tests on the dough we were using to see how long it took to bake and making appropriate changes while running it by taste testers, substituting ingredients for quicker bake time while preserving taste, making the cookies as thin as possible without comprising frosting ratio, canvas space for creativity, and or comprising structural integrity, etc. Come the day of baking, I have everything down to a science. As friends and family come in, I give them the rundown. After a couple hours most kinks are worked out, and cookies are flowing out at a breakneck pace. Eventually, we start running out of material. Something that never happened under my wife's aegis. We start making runs to the store for the necessary raw materials to fuel our mighty cookie forges. By the time we were exhausted around 2 a.m., we had produced at least five times the amount of cookies we ever had before. Well my wife gets home a couple days later and is weirdly upset. She insists the cookies taste weird, that we spent too much money, and that I was actively trying to make her look bad by making so much more than her. In truth, I ran blind tests to see if anyone could differentiate between our old recipe and mine, and no one could. I also only spent 40% more than years previous as I slotted in some cheaper ingredients and bought some stuff in bulk, and I had absolutely zero intention of upstaging her, I simply had the goal of maximize cookie production. She says that even if I didn't do it on purpose that I should have thought about how it made her look to out circles and that I have embarrassed her, and she actually called me in butthole. She's never called me in butthole in all three years of marriage, so I can't help but think I am. Am I the butthole? I don't know if you're T.A., but it sounds like you took something she enjoys and was sad about missing and did it without her. I would be sad if someone did that to me personally. Edited to add my vote of not the butthole. No buttholes here. You didn't do anything wrong, per se, and your methods sound fun and add a competitive edge which enhances the excitement for some people but no one likes to discover that a tradition on which they've spent time and effort and enjoy doing doesn't need them at all to function and may even be better without their hard work. Maybe consider telling your wife how much you and your friends missed her at this year's event, and that you'd rather have her and less cookies than so many more cookies without her. Why are you guys turning something that sounds cool slash fun, baking cookies, into something out of Gordon Ramsay? Am I the butthole for not inviting them to my Christmas party after they didn't invite me to their wedding? I throw a pretty big Christmas party every year going on a decade now. A few years ago at one I threw my friend Tara met my former co-worker Tony and they hit it off. They dated for a while, and two years later, once again at my Christmas party, she showed up with a ring on her finger and they announced for the first time that they were engaged. I was super happy for them. They got married this spring. We didn't get invited. When I was sending around my party invitations this year, I didn't see any reason to invite them back if they didn't think I wasn't worthy of making their guest list. I have known them both for years, basically introduced them, and they literally announced their engagement at my home. It got back to me today that they're very upset with us for not inviting them this year, that my party is something they consider special and they think I'm being petty. A couple friends mentioned it was a smaller wedding and they feel like I'm just punishing them. It wasn't though. There were probably 200 people there and I knew at least 50 of them, and I was a little surprised at some of the names that made the cut over us. I didn't make a stink about it or anything but I don't see why I should welcome them into my home again after being snubbed like that. My partner thinks I should just let it go and invite them back, but I don't see a reason why I should. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole, you can invite and not invite whoever you want without any reason. And if they want one, it is a smaller party this year. Edit, thanks for all the upvotes and my first award ever. You guys are great. Not the butthole, if they can't even invite the person, who introduced them, to their wedding then I don't think they should expect an invitation to your Christmas party. If you're not close enough to make it to the wedding invite list, why should they be close enough to you to make it to your Christmas party? Not the butthole. Also don't think it's petty. We don't have to prioritize people who don't prioritize us. 
Am I the butthole for not letting our kids eat my wife's cooking? Throw away. I, 34 male, have a wife, 32 female, and we have two children, female, 4 and, male, 7 I work as a manager at a care home and my wife owns a bakery with her mom. My wife cooks all the time because she is much better at cooking than I am, I cook sometimes. She is the one who takes care of the house, kids, and chores. Yesterday when I came back from work dinner was ready so I plated it up for everyone while my wife was washing her hands, my kids like their food cut up, I was cutting their chickens into pieces and it looked a bit pink I told my wife to look at it and she said it's a little pink but it's fine. I told her I'm not letting them eat this if it's pink, she told me to stop being a baby and it won't kill them. I kept telling her it's pink in the middle they shouldn't eat that they can get food poisoning and that's it's dangerous for them. She told me if you don't want them eating it then you can cook their dinner. I made them cheese and ham toasties, also made her one but she didn't eat it. She told me she isn't talking to me if I think her cooking is horrible. I don't think it's horrible I just didn't want our kids eating that. I told her to stop thinking she was right. So am I the butthole? INFO, why didn't you just put the chicken back in the oven? In the meantime, you're the butthole. Pink chicken is not dangerous if the internal temp was high enough. Also, instead of just saying oh honey, I am worried the chicken is a little pink, can we cook it just a little more just to be safe? You went all the way I am not serving that to the kids. And made a new meal altogether. Edit just for people that don't know how to cook, chicken has to reach a temp of 165 degrees. It might still look pinkish but, it's totally fine to eat. Also, the chances of getting salmonella from undercooked chicken is pretty slim. The real risk is cross-contamination, not undercooking. Can I just? I work as a manager at a care home and my wife owns a bakery with her mom. Okay, so two working parents, got it. My wife cooks all the time because she is much better at cooking than I am, I cook sometimes. Dang, it's so unfair how women are just genetically better at cooking than men are. Women don't have to go through the tedious process of learning how to cook like men do, how nice for them. She is the one who takes care of the house, kids, and chores. So she runs a business, a household, takes care of the kids, and does all the chores. What do you do? Oh, complain about pink chicken and be extra about making the kids a whole new meal instead of putting the chicken in the microwave for 45 seconds. You're the butthole. Edit, for everyone saying what I wrote was sexist, it is a statistical fact that women are responsible for 75% of unpaid domestic labor worldwide. Everyone is assuming that OP's wife likes cooking more and that's why she does it, and that would be another conversation. And loving baking loving working all day in a bakery and then coming home to the responsibility of preparing and cooking a meal, but that's not what OP said, and I'm taking OP at his word. He said that his wife is better at cooking, and that's why she does the majority of it. Just because she's better at a task doesn't mean it's fair for her to hold the responsibility for it. Just like it wouldn't be fair for her to be responsible for all of the chores, child raising, household management, etc. if she happened to be better at them than he is. You all are absolutely right, cooking isn't gendered, and neither are the rest of those responsibilities. And that's why OP should practice and build his skill set instead of justifying the uneven division of household labor by saying, she's better at it. Am I the butthole for not telling my son that his ex-girlfriend would be having breakfast with us? I, 46 male, have a son, 18 male, in senior year, who was with a girl, 18 female, for two years from his school and they recently broke up. His ex-girlfriend is well-mannered and intelligent, me and my wife both adore her. Her parents are the same. They broke up at the end of October after they went to a Halloween party and she broke up with him. They have despised each other since and would be cold to slash or about each other, though he never explained the details of why they broke up and has been extremely hurt by this. A couple of days back, a number was calling me several times in the middle of the night and I answered. It was his ex-girlfriend, she was crying and mumbling. She was going on about her mother and it was all incoherent. She was clearly inebriated and I calmed her down, she was asking me if she could stay in the guest bedroom for the rest of the night and I told her that she can stay however long she saw fit. Me and my wife included her into breakfast the next morning even though she felt embarrassed and my son joined us, but was clearly flabbergasted by seeing her and was about to leave, though I encouraged him to sit with us. It was quite awkward to say the least, though it is evident they clearly still like each other as I have seen her at our house. She cut her stay short as she said her parents would be worried and it was better if she started heading home. My son offered to drive her home, she just said no, thank you and left. As soon as she left, he got upset at both of us and was wondering why she was here for breakfast? And he told us that we were immensely invasive of a space in his life that is fragile and that I don't respect his boundaries by letting her stay without his knowledge. He told me that I should have at least warned him that she would be here. I was wondering if I was the butthole for letting her stay, encouraging her to stay for breakfast and proceeding to not tell him as he was greatly upset by this. Am I the butthole? You're the butthole.
It's your son's ex, why are you maintaining a relationship with them? It's weird. You also don't know why they broke up, so for all you know you invited your son's abuser to breakfast. You are the butthole for not letting him know she was there. You are not the ah for giving a teenager a safe place to stay. But you should have told your son so he could avoid her or at least be prepared to see her. You are the butthole he never explained the details of why they broke up and has been extremely hurt by this. You know it's something sensitive. If she really was in crisis and you needed to take her in, I could understand that, but you could have told slash warned him before he got to breakfast. I am, however, confused by this part it was quite awkward to say the least, though it is evident they clearly still like each other as I have seen her at our house. She's been at the house since the breakup? Am I the butthole for flipping out on a dog owner for ruining lunch? This happened about an hour ago at the time of typing. I have a three-month-old and wife is still on maternity leave. They came to visit me at work and brought Chick-fil-A for lunch. There is a canal area that is half a dozen decent-sized grassy areas with benches. There is a walking path along it that gets a decent amount of traffic. We find a completely empty grassy area with a bench. There is no one around and it's really nice out. My kid is sitting in the stroller just being chill. I'm talking to both my kid and wife while we are eating. My kid starts crying and I pick him up to soothe him. I see an over 50 guy walking by and he is eyeing us. Figured he was looking at my kid since he was crying. When all of a sudden a maybe 5 pound unleashed dog comes up and licks my wife's ankle. This scared the crap out of her. We are not exactly dog friendly. Neither of us grew up with dogs and have zero interest in owning, let alone interacting with them. Then a second small dog walks up to us. I turn to the guy and say get your dogs away from us. He just looks at me with this dopey look on his face. So I say it again. He half-heartedly tells the dogs to come to him. They don't listen to him. I'm like come on man, get your effing dogs away from us. We are eating lunch and don't want them around. My kid is still crying. My wife asks him to get them away too. He says to me you don't like dogs? I'm just like no, I don't like dogs, I also hate bad, I used a worse word, owners like you that don't leash their dogs and let them rudely walk up to people. I don't want your dogs around. He tells me I don't have to be so rude. I responded back with you are the effing prick that decided to let your dogs occupy the same 10 square feet as us despite there being other areas to go. If you wouldn't have bothered us, I wouldn't be flipping out on you. He looked shocked that someone didn't adore his dogs and walks away muttering at me under his breath. So am I the butthole? Edit, this is not a dog park, or even a regular park. Just an area with multiple grassy areas. There is a lot of signage to pick up poop and leash your dogs. Not the butthole. Leash laws exist for a reason. Not everyone wants dogs in their space, people have phobias, and allergies are a thing so for multiple reasons it's irresponsible to have them off leash in the same area as others without knowing if they're dog friendly. The fact that you had to ask multiple times and he seemed bewildered that he was in the wrong is aggravating and you're not obligated to be nice to people who don't have any respect for others in public. Not the butthole. He needed to have his dogs leashed. You have no idea if they have food aggression or are friendly or not. Absolutely hate irresponsible pet owners who do this. Not the butthole. So sick of entitled dog owners ruining public spaces. Am I the butthole for overstaying my welcome despite being invited to extend my stay? I, 24 male, am a senior in college. I typically head to my parents' place from my campus apartment around a week after finals end, but made the decision to head back early this year thanks to predicted inclement weather during the time I usually make the drive, and multiple instances of the heat going out in my building. I had already completed my in-person exams at that point and all I had left to do was finish up an essay that could be remotely submitted. My parents' house is kind of in a state of chaos right now. My sister and my nieces are staying with them for the time being and while I love seeing them and thought I could handle it, a house full of people isn't really essay writing friendly for someone with ADHD. After asking a few local family and friends if they had a place for me to hang out for the next few days and finish up, I ended up at my brother-in-law's sister's house. A little confusing, I know, I had met her, D. 30F, on multiple occasions, and had hung out with her husband, Sam, 29 meters, and my bill fairly often over the summer. They had a guest room for me to sleep in and Sam has a pretty kick-ass home office, library sort of thing he said would be perfect for me to write in. I arrived on December 7th, and my essay was due on the 9th. From the time I got there, D seemed a little put off about the whole thing, something I found odd, but I just focused on my work. Sam and I had a few drinks that night and hung out in his study until D came in and basically demanded he come to bed. I ended up finishing and submitting my essay the next day around 6 p.m., but Sam requested I stay longer as D was going on a girl's trip for the weekend. I agreed. I had a really great weekend. Sam and I had been close for a while, like I said, but I had never gotten to hang out with him alone. We had a routine of smoking a little, 
then going to his room to put on a movie that we would inevitably end up ignoring in favor of talking about anything and everything. He and I have a lot in common so it was one of those situations where we'd get lost in conversation and then suddenly it's 3 a.m. at which point I would typically head to the guest room. On Saturday night, we did the same thing, but we both must have dozed off at some point. I woke up to Dee basically yanking me out of bed, telling me I had overstayed my welcome and that she had expected me to be gone by the time she got back from her trip. I essentially got kicked out, and later got a text from my sister asking me why Dee was blowing up my Bill's phone and that I had embarrassed her in front of her in-laws. Am I the butthole? Edit, I mentioned this above, but I'm 24. I'm a few years past barely legal. I woke up to Dee basically yanking me out of bed. I think you mean, yanking me out of her bed, you know, the one with her husband currently in it? You're the butthole, and honestly Dee handled you way nicer than I would have. BTW how did you already establish a routine of smoking with her husband and staying in their bed when you'd only been there for like three days? Weren't you focused on your essay? ETA, great, this is just another one of those trolls where OP is gay, interested in the husband, and obliviously saying the wife is the problem. Look at his comments and you'll notice the pattern pretty quick. Um. He'll ask. Did you sleep together and have sex? Either way though? I'd be just like that woman if I got home to find my husband in bed with a woman or man. You're the butthole. She found you in bed with him. I'm sure you've also destroyed his marriage. Great job. You're the butthole. Edit, and here we have it from OP himself. And yes, I was clothed. I was wearing a t-shirt and underwear, what I usually wear to bed. In their bed in his underwear sleeping next to Dee's husband. Honestly, everybody sucks here. Nobody in this situation seems to be able to communicate properly. You got caught in the crossfires of their inability to communicate but if you got a vibe and it was clearly about your relationship with Sam, you could have talked to Dee or read the room. Honestly it's a bit crafty all around for everyone. Am I the butthole for putting a camera in my room and changing out the locks? I, 20 female, rent a one bedroom room in a two story house. My landlord, 65 female, and her daughter, 45 female, are my other two roommates. These last couple of weeks, I've been noticing my stuff being moved around and my computer having a couple of minor dents in it which I found strange. I thought of all the possible scenarios and decided to put a camera inside my room to see what was going on. Well on the first day it was set up, I got a motion detection and wouldn't you know it, it was my landlord's daughter snooping in my room and stabbing my MacBook with a butter knife. None of the rooms have locks on them. While no one was home, I changed my door knob with one that needs a key. My landlord was quick to point out the new knob and demanded I either give her the key or get rid of the lock. I explained to her that her daughter was snooping in my room and was destroying my property. She then told me to throw away the camera even though it's inside my room. So am I the butthole for not removing the lock or getting rid of the camera? Not the butthole. Might want to find a new place to live. These people are clearly not trustworthy roommates. Not the butthole. Get the frick out of that place and make it clear that they have zero right to your property and you will call the police if anything else happens. Unless you have a lease that has some kind of clause about installing stuff like cameras there's not much they can do. They clearly want it gone so they can snoop, steal, and vandalize your property. Am I the butthole for blasting Disney music? Hello I, 16 female, have an older brother, 19 male, who's one of those prank YouTubers and TikTokers. He's been doing this kind of content since 2017 first on YouTube then expanding to TikTok for short form around 2020. He's decently popular with children and makes some pretty good money from it. It's annoying for me and I hate it. As his little sister I'm constantly having a camera shoved in my face even when I'm busy. He's pranked me by pretending to delete my school projects off of my laptop, throwing out my homework, study material and once fabricated a fake report card that he gave to my tech illiterate parents which got me grounded for a month even after I proved that my grades are good because they never go back on their punishments. He has also come to my work to surprise me and prank me which has gotten me in trouble with my manager until they moved me to working in the back and not up front with customers because he'd come in so much. With my money I recently bought a Bluetooth speaker and whenever I see him with his stupid camera I blast whatever Disney music I can. Let it go, we don't talk about Bruno. Anything I can because Disney is vicious with copyright and the footage is useless. He's tried talking to me before about it, usually on camera, to work out our issue which means me stopping so that he can go back to making money off pranking me. Because I'm apparently very popular with his audience he's been slowly losing views and followers which he is blaming me and my speaker for. My parents are taking his side as he's providing for us and he's the golden child. So Reddit, am I the butthole? Edit, please stop telling me to expose him or make a call out post and exposing him. I don't and will not make a permanent social media account anywhere so that isn't possible. Not the butthole. He is harassing you against your consent. 
If he can't make views without harassing you, then he's not really making the money himself is he? You have a massively dysfunctional family if your 19-year-old brother's TikToks are providing for your family. Your parents suck, and your brother sucks. As soon as you're 18, find a way to move out and be on your own. Unless Hay pays you money for being in it Hay can shut the frick up. Ntai and your bro should prank his parents. Am I the butthole for agreeing to a meal share agreement but refusing to cook when it was my turn? I live with three housemates, let's call them Hannah, Stacy, and Meg. We are all usually home Monday to Thursday, and it was suggested that to save money and have a communal event, that we share dinner those nights each of us taking turn to cook. Stacy is gluten-free and vegetarian, the sort that eats fish and eggs and stuff, but not red meat or chicken, Hannah is also gluten-free, I'm allergic to potatoes and tomatoes. When I raise we've got a few dietary requirements to consider Stacy agrees the no tomato thing will be a bit limiting, but is still encouraging saying half of us are gluten-free, most things these days are vegetarian and how hard is it just not to eat a potato? I explain that potato is often used as a filler or an ingredient and you need to check for it. We decide to go ahead. Monday Stacy makes potato bake with salad. She seems surprised I won't even try the potato bake, and doesn't seem to really get that being allergic to potatoes means I can't eat potato bake even if it's organic gluten-free homemade and really yummy. The salad is literally just lettuce and cucumber without dressing. Tuesday Meg makes crumbed fish and chips of the buy in a bag and chuck it in the oven variety. She remembered the no potato thing and got some microwavable vegetables for me instead of chips, but when I asked her if the fish contained potato I got a blank stare and uh. It's fish, the box said gluten-free? So I fished the box out of the bin and it contained potato flakes. I remind everyone again about checking ingredients. Wednesday Hannah makes gluten-free pasta bake. It's not a tomato-based sauce. I ask if she's checked the ingredients of the gluten-free pasta and. Nope. It has potato. There is literally only two ingredients in this pasta, chickpea and potato. She feels really bad and offers to make me something else, but I say it's fine and I'll just have cereal. But, it really isn't fine, because I haven't really had a meal any night. Individually, everything was understandable, but three nights in a row was just too much. So Thursday morning I message everyone saying it's not working out, I don't want to do the meal share and I won't be cooking that night. I say I'm happy for them to still do the meal share but that including me is just too difficult and it will be easier for all if I arrange for myself. Hannah gets it, but thinks I should have given everyone a second chance and that I at least should have seen out my turn to cook. She said gluten-free is easy because it says it on the box, but having to read ingredients isn't normal. Stacy thinks I'm a straight-up ah who didn't appreciate that she made a meal from scratch and then refused to cook for her because I didn't like what she made. Meg doesn't care, but wouldn't take sides. Not the butthole but you guys really are the nightmare blunt rotation of communal cooking. Why don't you at least cook for your night so they can get an understanding of what you eat and it might help give them ideas about what to make on nights they cook. A second chance mightn't hurt and maybe have a sign up about everyone's dietary requirements on the fridge so no one forgets. Am I the butthole for sulking during my birthday trip that my boyfriend's parents hijacked? There's a lot to unpack here but I've done my best to keep it to the essentials. In preparation for my 2x slash f birthday that recently passed, my boyfriend 2x slash m booked an overseas trip. It was a surprise, so I left everything to him. A month before the trip, he informed me that his parents, 5x slash F, M, would be tagging along. This was unexpected to me. I was uncomfortable but the booking had already been made. I probably asked if we were sleeping in separate rooms, and he replied no due to financial constraints, fair, but I later forgot that I asked. He did assure me that his parents would have separate activities and we would have alone time. The trip came around, a three-day, two-night trip. Day 1. While in transit I asked why the arrangement. He disclosed to me that his mother had made a big fuss when she found out about this trip, he had been traveling with me a lot, and she was upset that he hadn't been making time for his parents. On the basis that her birthday falls on the same week as mine, surprise, she insisted on joining the trip. So how could her only son say no? I did not take this new information well emotionally, especially because I don't like his mother to begin with. Also the fact that this was straight up an emotionally manipulative move. We check into accommodations and I realize we're sharing one room. We have no privacy. We have virtually no alone time together on the first day. I sleep conflicted. Day 2 was where it went to hell. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and with a flu. I was mentally spiraling, thinking how dare his mother impinge on a trip for me like this. I was this close to crying and I couldn't even tell my boyfriend or cry. Naturally I had zero interest in entertaining his parents. Later I was told that I was frowning the entire day, unreceptive, disengaged, and when his mother spoke to me I replied her brusquely and avoided eye contact. I avoided conversations and slept whenever I could in the car. Day 3 and until now. The trip ended and I felt more liberated than anything else. 
A few days later my boyfriend informs me that his mother was very offended by my actions on day two and she thinks I'm a brat who can't respect her elders. She doesn't want to see me for the time being. Oh no, I think. How tragic. God, how little I care. To be fair, his parents had done nothing to offend me during the trip. They did not impose on me any expectations, or rules, and I would even say that his mother was accommodating and kind to me throughout. That's the one thing that makes me feel mildly bad. But in my opinion they should never have made what was my birthday trip into a family trip. I regret acting so childishly and perhaps I should have dealt with it better, but I am not apologetic for my feelings. Maybe she didn't deserve it, but she shouldn't have come. And maybe my behavior during the trip was because I wanted to punish everyone, scorched earth style. Curious, am I the butthole? So how could her only son say no? Like this, mom, no. This is a trip just for OP and me. Not the butthole. Not the butthole, dear lord this whole thing is the biggest red flag of all time. Run now or start mentally preparing for them to tag along on your honeymoon. Am I the butthole for telling my mom her husband can walk their children down the aisle but he was never my parent so is not walking me? My mom met her husband when I was 17 and she married him after 5 months of knowing him. I was already living with my grandparents so I could attend college when he moved in with her. So we never lived together. He never parented me or put a roof over my head or any of the stuff that some might say makes him worthy of playing father of the bride. He's an okay guy but I don't love him or feel particularly close to him. He's just my mom's husband and the father to my half-sibling she had with him once I was already moved out. My mom has apparently decided though, that he has done so much for me that I should be making him fa TB at my wedding and have him walk me down the aisle. My dad died when I was still a baby so mom doesn't count him, even though they were married and everything. Though they were both very young so maybe she didn't give a crap about him and only married him because she got pregnant. I don't know. But she was talking about her husband. He was acting like he expected it too and was talking about how I'd need to be introduced to some of his friends and co-workers so when I invite them, they identify me as his daughter. I thought it was crazy. The man is not my parent and he's only family on a technicality but we are not close, we hardly see each other ever. I told my mom it wasn't going to happen. She went crazy and accused me of being ungrateful and told me I was being disrespectful and how could he not walk his kid down the aisle. I told him he could walk their children down the aisle someday but he was never my parent and I was never his kid so he was not walking me. He was offended as hell. He told me he'd never do anything for me again. I asked him what he had done. He said he took care of my mom and gave me siblings and he put me through college, he didn't. He said if those things weren't appreciated then why did he even bother? Mom told me I should be worshipping the ground he walks on because he's been such a good dad. She called me selfish some more and then I just walked out and blocked her. But she told my grandparents, her parents, and they asked could I do it to show I appreciate him for being there for mom and for being kind to me. I told them he wasn't very kind to me there and I pointed out that my uncle, dad's brother, was already doing it. They told me it would be kind to let him. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. Wow their reactions are annoying and weird. If he was in your life since you were a baby sure maybe I could understand it. But you were already moved out when he came into the picture. Sorry they're being so ridiculous about this, try not to let it ruin your special day. Not the butthole. It's amazing how this act of entitlement probably has just destroyed any good feelings OP had about her mom's husband. It seems like he just went from good guy, glad he's there for mom to delusional pushy butthole who thinks he's owed special status because he exists. But while we're on the subject, OP, I really think I should be the one to walk you down the aisle. Sure, we've never met, but I did something nice for someone once, I figure you owe me. Not the butthole, your mom and her husband sound like incredibly toxic people. My guess is that they have been telling everyone what a great stepfather he has been to you and this is going to burst the little fantasy they have been telling all their friends to make him look good. Am I the butthole for not giving my cousin a wedding dress I inherited from my grandma? In April last year my, 19 female, grandma let everyone in her will inherit most things early, she's still alive, which was almost everything except for things like her house, etc. I inherited my grandma's wedding dress from the 50s or 60s since I loved it so much when I first saw it. I'm not getting married anytime soon but I plan to in the future and I want to wear my grandma's dress to my wedding. My cousin, Jake, 26 male, is getting married to his fiance, Lily, 25 female, late next year. Jake reached out to last week, which was weird because we are not close at all. He said that he had seen the dress before I inherited from our grandma and he wanted his fiance to wear it to their wedding. I told him that the answer would probably be no, and he was pretty upset about it. I decided to hear him out. He said that his fiancée would tell me her plans for alterations and stuff. Lily called me the next day and to sum it up she pretty much wanted to cut up the dress, dye it and completely change the bodice. I told Lily that her plans were not okay with me and she pretty much said I'm just going to give it to my future daughter slash daughter-in-law so I wouldn't want you wearing it. 
I was shocked by this jerk's entitlement and I told her that since it was my grandma's dress I would want her wearing it as it would take away from the sentimentality for me. I also told her that even if I did let her wear the dress there was no chance that I would let her keep it. Lily said it would be great since the dress would be free and her mum could do the alterations. I hung up when she started crying because I couldn't take any more of this girl's crap. Jake blew up my phone and told me that I'm such a jerk for making Lily cry and I shouldn't have made them think there was a chance they could have the dress. I told Jake that at first I might have been a chance but by the time Lily called I had made my decision. Jack blew up saying that I shouldn't rob his fiancé of the opportunity for the perfect dress, ect. I told him that the reason for my decision was that I was planning to wear it to my future wedding, that the dress was important to me and I didn't want to wear a dress that had been worn by someone else so recently. He said some bullcrap like our grandma might not even be there when you get married so why not let Lily wear it. I texted him, I might have gone too far but I was pissed, saying that Lily wasn't part of the family and that the dress meant nothing to her and didn't have the value to her that it had to me, I didn't want someone to take that away from me. I called my grandma about this and she said that I shouldn't give it to them as she didn't want Jake's fiancé to wear the dress because she barely knew her. Since then Jake and Lily have both been blowing up my MSGS and Instagram DMs and Lily's parents even to me, I've ignored all of it as it's just them being pissed and begging for the dress. Am I the butthole? If it's the perfect dress why is she planning to die and alter it? They're just after a freebie. Not the butthole all the way. Not the butthole I can't imagine anyone would think you are. Weird that Jake had seen the dress before and that he wanted his bride to wear it, and said bride want to alter it completely. Sounds like they want a free dress. Your grandmother, your dress. Love it and wear it. Not the butthole. Block all of them. And hide the dress. Not the butthole. The insane level of entitlement from Jake, and especially Lily, is beyond belief. Am I the butthole for saying I'm not you when someone told me not to take a certain med due to how they reacted to it? I will be short here. My husband of 12 years is a recovered opiates addict. He got into a major car wreck, they have pain killers, he got addicted. He has now been 7 years clean and doing fantastic but there was a 2 year period there where he lost who he was entirely just about and burnt a lot of bridges that he is still trying to mend. I think it may be important to note that he also has addictive personality. I had to go in for an emergency surgery 4 days ago and was given pain killers. I was only given 10 total, lose dose, because I'm not used to them, never taken them before. It's hard enough trying to get me to take Tylenol. So I did fill the script but I hadn't taken them. Well, this morning my pain was severe and Tylenol was not touching it. When I originally filled the script my husband was very much so in a I don't think you should take them. We should get your med card instead. Type of headspace. But I admittedly pushed it off entirely because at that point I wasn't in too much pain, considering. It's the healing process that is making it painful, the wound healing and then tearing open due to the location and packing of the wound. Anyways, I went to take a painkiller this morning and my husband immediately got tense. Again started saying not to take them and that he wasn't comfortable with me taking them and again, stated I should just smoke pot instead. Given that I was in so much pain at that point because my wound had torn while I moved in my sleep and I was currently bleeding, which doctors said would happen, I snapped a little and said I'm not you, okay? I get that you became addicted but I'm not you. He looked completely wrecked and I did feel bad. He just walked off and left. Currently isn't speaking to me. Am I the butthole? not the butthole. Pain makes everything worse. You're not him. If he was an alcoholic would you not be allowed to have a drink? This isn't about him. It's about your needs. You're in pain. You're taking something you need. I get it makes him uncomfortable because of his addiction and trauma and past, but that doesn't mean you don't get to take what you need. I'd lock them in a safe he doesn't have access to and not let him see you take them. No buttholes here. He isn't coming from a malicious place, even though he is 100% projecting his experience onto you. With painkillers, addiction is a legitimate concern, but it sounds like you're simply using them when you absolutely can't stand the pain otherwise. You are also not the butthole because you explained your position calmly lots of times. You lost your patience this one time, which is understandable. I hope he heard you this time. Not the butthole. Your response was unintentional and fueled by excessive pain. His reaction is born of fear for your well-being. Perhaps a conversation and exchange of affection will smooth things over. No buttholes here I understand where he's coming from but not everyone is susceptible to addiction. I had my wisdom teeth surgically removed last year and they gave me 8 oxycodones. I didn't even use one, ibuprofen and Tylenol got me through it just fine. I do get migraines and I have rheumatoid arthritis so when either of these flared up, I reached for an oxy. It took me 8 months to go through them all. Then back in July I had a total hysterectomy and they gave me Percocet. Now I did take some of those while I was healing. I like the way they make me feel namely no pain but also relaxed and a bit giggly. I still have a lot left over and I only use them when I need to. 
It gives me peace of mind to know I have them should I need them. But as you said, you're not him. He is projecting in fear. Getting high is not always the solution. Weed sometimes intensifies the pain. You know what kind of person you are and you got a script because you had surgery and will be, are, in pain. Am I the butthole for not giving my son's old toys to my ex so his new kids could play with them? My ex, 39 male, and I, 40 female, share a son, 20 male, we divorced when our son was 5 because my ex came out to me as gay, right after our divorce my ex became an absent parent for the next 6 years of my son's life it was until he settled down with his current husband that he became a way better parent to our son having him 50% of the time and taking care of him. Even if ex kind of forgot about our son for 6 years, his parents didn't, they disowned their son but still wanted to be part of my son's life, they are wealthy so my son never missed anything in his life, they even contributed to my son's college and are even paying for his apartment and expenses so he doesn't worry about finding a part-time job, they got him every type of toys from the ages 3 to 10, those are expensive and amazing toys for a child. My son was so careful as a child so the toys are as good as new, they are all packed and saved in a room at my house waiting to my future grandkids to play with their dad's old toys. Here is the thing, my ex married this man, and had kids the twins just turned three and my ex called to say that he'd pick some of my son's old toys to give them to his kids, I had to call my son to see if he was okay with this and he told me he didn't really care and I could do what I wanted with the toys, so I told my ex that I decided to keep them for our future grandchildren because they are the ones who have the right to possess what their dad once owned, he called me a jerk for not letting his kids have the toys since my son doesn't really care much about them and there are kids around who can play with them and this was also a way to connect with their big brother. I mean I think I'd be the butthole if they couldn't afford it but come on ex's husband is a dermatologist and ex is an engineer, they can afford toys. My husband thinks I'm the ah for the only reason that they are unused now and some other kids could be playing. But there is also a chance these kids are not as careful as my son and can get them broken. Edit, I want to answer some questions here. 1. Ex was in fact disowned for being gay. 2. X wasn't present in my son's life until my son turned 11 that's when he started buying my son all the toys, those toys from ages 11 to 16 were donated a couple of years ago. X still paid child support. 3. X didn't sign away his parental rights, the first agreement after the divorce was that I would have my son and he'd visit, but he often skipped the visitations and my son barely saw him for 6 years. 4. X didn't cheat. 5. The toys I have stored are for kids in ages from 3 to 10. X knows about them because we have improved our relationship over the years and he had visited me a couple of times. 6. My son sees his little brothers as family, former in-laws sadly don't and call them plastic slash synthetic babies. 7. Former in-laws and I don't have the relationship we used to, they expected me to alone forever lol, they got mad when I engaged to my fiancé, now husband, because I wasn't teaching my son a good example. Not the butthole but your ex is. He's an amazing father? Are you kidding? Amazing father? Suddenly he remembers he has a kid after 6 years? He dumped his kid for 6 years and then comes back, that doesn't make him anything but an amazing butthole. Then he is mad that you're not giving him toys that clearly don't belong to him and probably didn't pay for a dime, since he abandoned you and your child. Don't care if he came out gay. Has nothing to do with how he treated your son. Don't think twice about what he thinks of you. Don't give him anything. His new kids are his responsibility, not yours. He sounds abusive. Not the butthole. He's wanting to use items he did not help purchase? I have passed on childhood books from my daughter to her children. There's something special about seeing it used for another generation. Not the butthole. Honestly I had to think hard about this one, and what it came down to for me is that it seems like the toys have some sentimental value to you. Assuming this is correct, as you want to keep them in the family and pass them down to you hypothetical future grandkids, that to be fair you don't even know if you'll have. I see his point about just storing a bunch of toys that could actually be used, but he doesn't have a right to them by any mean, and expecting you to give him something you technically own isn't cool. Now if you're doing it just out of spite and using future grandkids as an excuse I would consider you the butthole, but I really didn't get the sense that was the case. Not the butthole, your ex has some nerve. I think you did the right thing by asking your son. They are technically his toys. But if he doesn't care what you do with them, then it's totally your right to save them for potential grandchildren. Also, the fact that he wants those specific toys, when he likely has a boatload of money, means he's either super cheap, or, his parents aren't involved in his younger children's lives, and he thinks getting his hands on toys his parents purchased will somehow make up for their ruined relationship. But it's not on you to heal the damage he caused with his actions. So don't worry about it. Am I the butthole for refusing to wear a disgusting ugly sweater to Christmas dinner with my boyfriend despite it being a family tradition? My BF and I have been dating for a few months, and he invited me to meet his family for the first time for Christmas dinner. According to him, 
It's his brother's, he has three, family tradition to make new partners wear an ugly Christmas sweater of their choosing as a rite of passage, his words, for entering the family. At first I thought the concept was cute, I had imagined things like Santa getting stuck in a chimney, lights, bells, etc. But when they mailed me the sweater my jaw dropped. It was probably the most vulgar Christmas sweater I've seen, without getting into it, let's just say that Santa was making gestures slash participating in an act that was not okay for children to see. I personally thought it was gross, and it was bad enough that if someone at work saw me wear it I'd definitely get in trouble. I told my boyfriend that in no way would I wear this, but he said I was being a wet blanket and unsupportive of his family tradition. I said I'd wear any other sweater and would even pay for one myself, but he just called me a spoil sport. I do love my boyfriend, so I actually considered wearing it and asking people to not take photos as a compromise, but the day of the party I decided to not wear it last minute. I had to drive separately from work so my boyfriend didn't know about this prior. When his brother opened the door, he eyed me up and down and I could tell he wasn't happy that I didn't wear the sweater. My boyfriend was really pissed when he saw me, and we argued in the guest room for a little bit. His brothers teased me for being uptight, and I could tell the jokes embarrassed my boyfriend. I ended up leaving the party early without my boyfriend, and we've been fighting via text since. Now I'm thinking that I was an off for taking the joke too seriously. Update, I really appreciate everyone who took the time to message me. After reading your comments, I really thought long and hard about my boyfriend's family and whether or not I wanted to be with a partner who wouldn't respect my boundaries. We got in one final fight when he nagged me to apologize to his brothers all separately. I told him that if he wore the sweater they bought me to our friendsmas party, about 15 to 20 attendees, then I'd apologize. He immediately freaked and said no, and tried to argue they wouldn't understand because it's not their tradition. I explained that it had nothing to do with tradition but rather with my personal comfort level and whether or not the sweater was an appropriate article of clothing. I asked him why he felt uncomfortable wearing the sweater in front of friends, and he refused to answer. He froze up and that's when I realized it wasn't going to work out. He knew that it was inappropriate and he, himself, refused to wear it in public. Yet he was too stubborn to apologize and be on my side. I told him it wasn't going to work out, so I guess I'm going into the new year single as a Pringle. A few friends found out about the breakup already, and this might have made me an awe now, but I sent them the photo of the sweater and explained what happened. I'm also glad to know that even people in real life were grossed out. I don't know what will happen with his friendships with those people, but it's none of my business at this point. Thanks guys, and happy holidays. Not the butthole. I honestly thought by the title, it was one of those cheesy ugly sweaters, but it seems. Like it wasn't that. It also seems like, they want to turn you into the butt of joke for the evening. Also I'm guessing none of the males wore ugly sweaters either. Not the butthole. Ugly sweaters are one thing. Crude sweaters meant as hazing are another thing. That your BF supported the sweater should be a little concerning. Honestly, if a family has a, a habit of hazing new partners, the best thing you can do for yourself is to set proper expectations immediately and not play along. Starting out with them in a compliant don't rock the boat attitude is just kicking the can down the road. If they're testing your threshold for compliance and abuse, then non-compliance is key. If they're just mean people who are more concerned with their own hilarity, eye roll, than they are with making a guest feel welcome, then again, you're telling them right up front to leave you out of it. Not the butthole. And depending on your BF's willingness to protect you now, in the beginning, when you're still in the honeymoon phase and everyone is on their best behavior, really take a long hard look at this family's dynamics. With the expectation that the first year or two are when everyone's putting their best foot forward, the inference is that it's all downhill from here. You really looking down the road and seeing a good outcome here? Not the butthole it's only been a few months. Throw this one back.